spoilers. 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 I like that word. I thought you might. Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 10. So I asked on Twitter and Hubi and Zemino what should be my next Top 10 list and it was a very close call. But I am very pleased to announce my Top 10 Master Stories. Number 10. The Mark of the Rani. I begin to understand why the Master finds you such a menace. What could be better than one renegade Time Lord? Well, how about three? In the story that introduced us to the Rani, we see her face off against both the Doctor and the Master. However, this story also shows us that whilst the Doctor and the Rani are hardly friends, the relationship between the Master and the Rani is no less antagonistic. I'll not ask again, because without that chemical you cannot rest. Number 9. The Ultimate Foe. Some evil in all of us, Doctor, even you. Whilst this isn't overly a master story, I wanted to include it because it shows us an interesting change in the dynamic between the Doctor and the Master. The Doctor has always been the good to counter the Master's evil, however, in the guise of the Valyard, an amalgamation of the darker sides of the Doctor's nature, this story raises the question, could the Doctor be capable of being far darker? You really are a second-rate adversary. Did you imagine I'd be lured by such a transparent ploy? Number 8. Planet of Fire. <laughs> it could be said that the Doctor and the Master exist somewhat symbiotically. Their relationship doesn't benefit each other, and yet they cannot exist without each other. Planet of Fire is a story that shows this very well, how despite how many times he tries to destroy him, the Master is not above needing the Doctor's help. Number 7. The Five Doctors. I'm here to help you. Help me. Even when there are five Doctors, well, four. The Master is still a match for all of them. And this story is one of the few good examples on this list which gives us insight into the relationship between the Doctor and the Master. Despite all their differences and battles, even the Master must concede that the universe needs the Doctor. A cosmos without the Doctor scarcely bears thinking about. I Number six, survival. And now at last. To destroy you. The last time the Master would be seen in the classic series is in the final ever episode. And despite the series coming to an end, this makes Anthony Ainley's performance all the more special. No matter how many times he's defeated, the Master always returns, and despite his fate being left in a somewhat cliffhanger on this episode, you just knew that one day he would be back. Every fight like animals will die like animals. Number 5. The Deadly Assassin. The question which many people have wondered at times is what happens to a Time Lord when they reach the end of their life? Well, the answer is you become a walking corpse. In the mid-70s, Doctor Who was notorious for its grim, dark, and often scary storylines, and this story was no exception. The Master, who had previously been seen as a villainous gentleman, was now reduced to a raving, decaying madman. Something which made the character all the more scary, and in some ways set the tones for the insanity of the new series Masters in the years to come. Number 4. Utopia. It was a tough choice between what I call the Series 3 three-part finale, but Utopia was the best choice. We got two masters, a proper regeneration for the character, finally, and of course a fantastically sinister reveal that had many people, including myself, on the edge of their seats. Number 3. Terror of the Autons. No top 10 master stories list would be complete with not only the original master, but the original master story. We've had many great masters over the year, but rather like Sean Connery as the original movie Bond, Roger Delgado's original master will always be the best incarnation of the character. I am usually referred to as the master. Number two, the witch is familiar. Now, this might generate some controversy, but I'm just going to say it. I like Missy's incarnation of the master. Originally, I never thought a female master would work, but Michelle Gomez's acting and the writing for the character in this episode really managed to give the Doctor and the Master a best friends slash best enemies relationship that is very reminiscent of the relationship between the classic series Doctors and the Masters at times. Moron. Of course, with so many stories to choose from, there had to be a few honourable mentions. <laughs> Listen. I can hear you 
your thoughts, Doctor. I can feel your memory. Oh, oh. <laughs> you never do. <laughs> Couldn't very well keep calling myself the master. Now could I? Number one, the Sea Devils. This is the second time that the Sea Devils has been a top pick, having previously been my number one classic story. But the reason this story makes my top pick isn't just because it contains the original master, but it also contains the perfect example of the best friends slash best enemies or Holmes and Moriarty relationship between the third Doctor and the original master. As I previously said, whilst the new series has somewhat managed to reacquire this with the relationship between the 12th Doctor and Missy, it still hasn't managed to recapture the mutual respect they have for each other despite their differences, as well as this particular episode ever managed to do. Goodbye, Doctor. I sincerely hope we meet again very soon. And that brings to a close another top 10, as always. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out a lot. And be sure to check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. It would really help me out a lot if you supported that too. I salute you all, and I will see you with another video very soon.